Hey, 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 it's Rod Bergeron here with you, and uh, I'm going to start a new series on uh, ink. And this is India Ink Bombay Black. Um, I really appreciate ink. I love the amount of contrast that you can get between the white of the page and the black of the ink and everything in between. And I'm going to show you over the next couple of videos how to get all of these different uh, effects and how to really create super interesting work with uh, black ink. So let's get right at it. So in this particular bottle is a dropper, right? So uh, one of the things that I really appreciate about ink is that it goes a long, long way. So there's a dropper in here. And if I was drawing in ink, I, really would not need more than one drop to do a lot of work. And I'm gonna show you that here today. So I just have an empty, um, this is a container, I think like a fruit cup container or something. And I'm getting dust all over here, which I don't wanna do. Uh, but I'm just gonna take one drop of ink, okay? One drop. That's it, one drop of ink. And there's lots of ways to use ink. One of the ways that I use it is, of course, you can use a, like a quill, a nib pen. And I've used this for literally decades. And I have all different kinds of nibs that go on it, uh, mostly for writing, right? Basically, there's flat ones, other pointed ones, ones that have two points on them. We're not gonna really talk about that here today, but there is lots of them. So a nib pen is one way and really just getting into the idea of, of dipping it into the ink uh, for almost every stroke. But that's not really what I wanna talk about today. So I use ink lots of times with just a regular stick. And this is a dogwood stick, uh, this red type of wood. It's really just, uh, I live in Southern Ontario. It's really just a sort of a pesty kind of a plant, but it's really good for cutting a fine tip onto. And you can take that and dip that right into the ink. And you just have to get used to the idea of going back uh, for almost every stroke. And after you've done it for a while, you'll, you'll build up sort of a uh, it's it's not quite a pattern. It's you know you just get used to oh I'll only be able to go that far, so you'll go back and you know you'll start to get oh I ha I can only go that far with it, so I gotta go back and reload my stick. I was gonna say pen, but in this particular case it's stick. So I just wanted to go around there for a second and you know just show you how. You know, I have this pattern built up in my head of I have to do so many strokes and then I have to go back and reload. Now, for some people, some people are going to say, oh, well, that's kind of a pain. I'm just going to use a regular pen, you know, like a regular black Sharpie or whatever the other pen is that you're using. Um, for me, this becomes sort of about immediacy. I like to go... Um, I like to go out and draw and paint. And so when I'm painting in plein air, I will just take this and pick up a stick where I am, pull out my knife, sharpen the stick and use the, the uh, ink right out of the bottle, right from a stick that I chose in that particular location. So that's one thing that you can do with it is you can use, you can use it right out of there. But here's another thing that you can do with this is I'm gonna use this brush. It's a fairly large brush. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of water and I'm gonna put a little bit of water into here, okay? So you've seen that was just one brush full of water. And what you are able to do is you're able to turn it into sort of a, a wash, not sort of a wash, it's a wash. Turn it into a wash and get different, so I can put more water into this. 
And with these, with the bottom of this thing, I just introduce more or less water into the mixture and do that. And you can start to build up, you know, build up some levels of gray with this. So I can come back into this, add a little bit more black to it, pick up a little bit more water. I'm gonna put some more water on the other side over here so I have less of a, a thinner wash, just like that. All right, so I'm using watercolor paper. That's the other thing I should say here is I use watercolor paper for pretty much all the work that I do now. I use watercolor paper. Uh, even drawing, I put on watercolor paper. But then you can just take a tissue and, you know, you can take off some of that. You can actually take off a lot of it, okay? Take it off, and then you can say, okay, so I want a little bit of a barnyard across here. I'm gonna put a little bit of a barnyard sort of across here like that, and it will react much the same way as watercolor does. The difference between watercolor and ink is that ink is permanent which brings me to another difficult lesson to learn. Don't wear good clothes when you're working in ink. Okay? I guarantee you, it will destroy your clothing. Anyways, there's a, there's a, a good a good starting point for you. You don't have to have expensive brushes. You don't have to have expensive nibs. You don't have to have expensive pens. You can just take out regular Joe Blow stick and a bottle of ink and one paint, one watercolor brush and have a go at it. And you'll see you'll be able to build up all kinds of different levels of darkness on here. Give it a shot. If you're currently a subscriber, I thank you very much. And if you're not currently a subscriber, please consider subscribing to my channel. Have an awesome day.